Our scripture lesson for today is the gospel according to Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. Mark 7, 24 through 37. Here is God's word to us. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of a Sorophonician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealous they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My favorite story in the whole of New Testament is the story of Jesus and this Syrophoenician woman. Just prior to today's story, Jesus emerged from an extended period of conflict with Jewish religious leaders and many Jewish people and even including his own disciples. Jesus seemed to need a quiet place to be alone, so he went to the Gen Gentile territory of Tyre. There he went into a house and would not have anyone know it. But Jesus was followed, as we just read in the scripture, into the house by a woman who's dis who is described as a Greek Syrophoenician by birth. This means she was a Gentile. Phoenician designated that her race. Syro indicates that she lived in the Roman province of Syria. She would be a pagan and not a worshiper of a Jewish God. She seemed to have heard about Jesus' power of healing. She fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Her action was very similar to what we see in today's multi-faith society. A Hindu, Muslim, or a Buddhist consulting with a Christian physician because his or her medical power is well known in the community. In other words, it was Jesus' fame as a miracle worker and a healer that attracted this Syrophoenician mother to him. Her love for her daughter was so deep that she crossed the religious line and interrupted a Jewish rabbi. Jesus' first response to her was very harsh. Basically, Jesus was telling her, Jews first, go away. In those days, Jews were called the children of God and Gentiles, dogs. Out of her deep love for her tormented daughter, this Syrophoenician mother said to Jesus, using his very own words, Lord, 
Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. She called Jesus by the title Lord, and this is, she is the only one and the first one who ever called Jesus Lord in the whole book of the gospel according to Mark. That word also in some ways other times translated, get translated as sir. Jesus told her for so saying that you may go, the deacon has left your daughter. It is remarkable to me to learn that Jesus changed his mind and did a new thing. He listened to the response of the Syrophoenician mother who was a Gentile and an outsider. It was no longer necessary for Jesus to minister to the Jews first and then only go to the Gentiles. His ministry became inclusive just as we sing in one of the hymns last Sunday, in Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north. When I first went to one of my calls or churches in 1999, I was introduced by the senior pastor, John Roper. John said to the congregation, this is your new associate pastor, Mingi. With Mingi coming, we become very inclusive church in three ways. One, she is a racial ethnic person. Two, she's an ordained woman. Three, she is short. <laughs> Just like that, all of us, including myself, had a great laugh. John isn't very tall either. So he was very delighted that I was much shorter than him. And then we also went on to have nearly 10 years of loving, productive ministries together. Scholar Herman Wagen says, the Syrophoenician woman alone appears to grasp the distinctive sovereignty of Jesus as the new human being who is simultaneously God's offspring. The woman rolled with the insulting term dog and acted as if she did not get the insult. She turned it around to provide an avenue for Jesus to help her now. Lord, even the dogs get the crumbs while the children are still eating at the table, she said. Wajin goes on to tell us Jesus is obliged to yield to this Greek mother in view of the logic of her resp response. For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter, said Jesus to her. His declaration is enough for her. She believed and had faith in Jesus' lordship and healing power. The Syrophoenician woman went home and found her daughter well. I think that Jesus moved past seeing the woman as a Gentile or a Greek speaker or a Syrophoenician because he certainly sees her as the human being she is, as the mother fiercely determined to protect and find help for her child. Jesus saw that she was a loving mother. Jesus recognized in that moment that the woman and her daughter were also children of God. So Jesus changed his mind and did a new thing. Our world today is not that different from Jesus' time. We have many cultures and backgrounds, languages and even skin colors. The question here for us is how do we take Jesus' example to do a new thing? listening to one another, hearing one another, and responding to one another with love and respect. In short, how do we do a new thing to love God and to love neighbors and one another? Sometimes it is easy to get started a good new thing, but it is important that like Jesus, we continue and carry on listening to God's call in our lives every day. The gospel according to Mark chapter seven continues with Jesus healing the deaf mute Gentile man. When Jesus was healing the man, he looked up to heaven and said, Ephatha, be opened. I believe that 
my professor and scholar Harman Wajan is right in saying that means the heavens were opened for the Gentiles and the Spirit of God was to descend upon them as it did at the time of Jesus' baptism in Mark chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 2 tells us that despite our differences, God is the maker of all people. It reads, the rich and poor have this in common, the Lord is the maker of them all. Further, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 23, we read that it is God who pleads the case of the poor and the afflicted. This is why we love and respect and care for them now. Wisdom is also found in Psalm 125, the first couple of verses that tells us, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounds his people from this time on and forevermore. This Syrophoenician mother's trust and faith in Jesus' healing power was an example of this psalm. James chapter 2 tells us that God is on the side of the poor and we are to treat everyone equally without favoritism. James tells us in verse 17, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And those works are to reflect God's abundant and inclusive love for all people. Later in the service, we will share communion, a symbol of God's inclusive love for all of us. Sending Jesus for us was a new thing God did. <laughs> 